It's the Bush League Mud Show. It's the Bush League Mud Show. Let's go. Are you ready? Make some noise! All right, yo, 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 yo. It is time for another one. We are back another week. Slade. PJ. We are the Bush League Mud Show coming at you. Um, talking that wrestling-ish. And, of course, we got the great stuff for you. So, again, subscribe, hit the bell, ring that baby right now, and you'll get all the future uploads, too. Yes, like and subscribe and listen to us wherever you can listen to your favorite podcast. So, wrestling news for this week. Uh, Bailey, she had already been talking about how a lot of the WWE releases over this past year, it's really been hampering on her and a lot of the main roster backstage at these shows and Mm -hmm. yeah i think the roster has suffered the biggest blow of them all for this year so far because it is in fact bailey who has suffered an injury while training and will miss roughly nine months that is according to wwe.com who reported it Um, The story also went into stating that a suitable replacement would be announced during the SmackDown television show for the SmackDown Women's Championship match at Money in the Bank, where Mm -hmm. she was once again going to be the challenger going at Bianca Belair. We watched SmackDown. (laughs) And uh, it was uh, Sonya Deville's favorite superstar on the main roster that's going to get that crack and lose again, which will be Carmella. Yeah. We, we've already seen this, you know, story play out where Carmella, you know, even if it was against Sasha when they repackaged her and brought her back and we knew, well, she's not going to beat Sasha. And then, yeah, now against Bianca Belair, she ain't going to win again. So, I mean, y- you had a very good idea when we talked about this going on and with, with Bailey and the injury. You know, this is a chance. Maybe they do something different here. I'll let you introduce what you thought maybe they do, but... To give it a little fresh blood here. Well, yeah, I mean, and we can jump on the SmackDown stuff uh, here in a little bit. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the article, as far as the injury, because people are trying to figure out, okay, what kind of injury that Bailey suffered. Now, if you watch SmackDown, they shot a backstage uh, or a pre-recorded yes. promo that yeah. she had did. She's on the couch, and she's got her left leg. It looks to be the left leg, and she had a knee brace on. Mm-hmm. So... I don't know if that part was just for a show with the brace because it looked very. I mean, it wasn't the full, the yeah. the, the fully armored stone cold yes, knee, exactly. knee brace yeah. that we've seen from back in the day. But you know that at least alluded okay that it's probably knee related, and I mean, look, you're you're hoping it's not ACL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, she cut a promo and and which was very very well done. She it mm-hmm. wasn't one of those thanks for the no. get well wishes. No, it was Bailey heel Bailey being yeah. heel Bailey. I loved it. The article uh, as far as the injury, they didn't talk about the nature of it. Nine month recovery period that puts Bailey in line to return just in time for WrestleMania 38, which is going to be uh, April 3rd mm-hmm. uh, at AT and T Stadium. In yeah. Arlington, I was about to call it Dallas, but um, <laughs> as far as the entry, barring any additional further details, saying otherwise, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it was probably training, unfortunate injury. It yeah. happens in any kind of athletics. Yes. It, the, these things happen, run throughs, mm-hmm. uh, walk throughs, or any kind of practice. The, these things they happen. So yes. I'm just gonna say it's a freak injury that happened. What it does. To me, dude, is it shines a a, a light on WWE, which is their issue, which is losing a top star from an already thin field of women on the Raw and SmackDown roster. Yeah, it's getting thinner by the week. Between the releases and misuse of female talent on the main roster, this is a huge blow, especially when there was plans that Bayley was probably going to be whenever Becky Lynch returned. That was probably mm-hmm. going to be her first feud out the gate was Bailey. Yeah. That puts everything in limo right limbo right now. You probably gotta push up Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks return. Yes. Okay. Yep. We're we're watching SmackDown. No notice whatsoever. We're not even gonna wait till the draft. We've nope. got Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox as a tag team. They don't even tag together in NXT. No. No. They're in their own separate tag teams. Yes. But we did a makeshift because why not? That's what this company does. They do makeshift tag teams because mm-hmm. they don't believe in just 
molding and and bringing up just two people together to be a tag team. We'll just call up two people, knock out yep. two birds with one stone, have them take on the tag team champs of Tamita and Natalia with no notice whatsoever. Yeah, and they get a win. Of well, I mean, we'll cover it all down the way, road, but no, that's pretty Te- much what happened. I mean, There's- Tegan Tegan Knox just came back on NXT as a big surprise return this past Tuesday for the uh, Great American Bash episode they had. So also, when I see her roll out with the tank, I'm like, well, Triple H has got to be pretty pissed off about this because you just brought her back to that storyline. But like you were saying with these NXT call ups, they do this all the time. They did it with Alistair Black. And Ricochet a couple of years ago. Yeah. They weren't a tag team down at NXT, but they just threw them together. And Gargano surprised. and Champa. Yeah, uh, well, at least they were, you know, DIY down at NXT. They were a tag team at one point. So I could see that a little bit. But, you know, coming up to the main roster in this, uh, for, you know, the Bailey perspective, yeah, it really Couldn't sucks. Have come at a worse time. She was really on fire as a fantastic, annoying heel. I bought the promo a little bit too. She was doing really good at it, and I thought maybe she's faking. It. Maybe she's just gonna pop up and say "gotcha" and it start that annoying laugh. I mean, she did a really good job with it, but unfortunately, it's true. I saw Big E sporting the Bailey shirt too, so there's the some, ding dong hello yep, shirt. Yep. So there's there's some definitely love, even though she's the heel character. Uh, she did fantastic, and especially you think about Bailey when she came on the scene. Uh, when she was called up, yeah. you know, she kind of got lost in the shuffle there with the whole, you know, the inflatable thing and all that. And Which pe- got over. It and, did get and, over. And, People but, loved but it, it could at first. only go on for yes. so long. And then she proved that she could be a hell of a heel, one of the best in the company. And this run she was having right here. So hopefully when she comes back, I don't know, she goes back to baby face or, you know, maybe kind of a. I don't know, with the knee brace, it kind of yeah. reminded me of a, maybe a stone cold kind of heel when she comes back, doesn't give a you know shit about things and beats the hell out of people. I don't know, but uh, looking forward to her when, you know, Oprah gets a great yeah. rehab here and uh, see her back hopefully in time for Mania next year. These questions that get asked, whether it be our podcast or anyone else's podcast or just in general, in jest when you're having wrestling conversations and the name of Triple H comes up and Vince McMahon together in the same conversation. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not to put them against one another. No, I don't no. think it's who knows. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but yeah. these are common sense questions that you would think from the outside of how does Triple H feel? You've got all these releases that yeah. have recently, the most recent releases have hurt his 205 live division, yes. the cruiserweights. Yeah, that's okay. basically done. We've been cutting some of the some of the female talent that he's had either NXT or recently like shot up to the main roster, stuff like that. People that have come through his pipeline. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a problem that they have created, and he unfortunately is taking the brunt of the damage because, again, Shotzi Blackheart, Blackheart yeah. it was already out there that she was working some dark matches, worked some main event stuff. Yep. So it looked okay, she will be a part of the draft. Well, now that just now you just <laughs> took a few people, her and Tegan Knox, yeah. out of that pool for the draft. Even if you yeah. still have them drafted, we've already seen them on main roster television. Yes. Which is when we talked on the last episode, we were talking about how the draft just doesn't mean shit no. anymore because you've already gotten accustomed to seeing these yeah. people on national television as it is. And with you know, with like you were saying, the Vince and Triple H thing, you can tell Triple H really loves that roster. You know, anytime you see one of those behind the scenes or anything like that, it I don't you know, it's not a put on for the cameras. He really invests his time in these NXT, you know, personalities. Makes himself getting them accessible. Over, it makes them accessible, trains with them. He's down there with them and developing them. And you can see, you know, the pure joy when they win or they get called up or when they get the big match finally at Mania or whatever on the main roster. But, you know, the guy's really invested in this roster. Maybe how Vince was maybe 20 years ago. I mean, that's, you know, Vince now, it, things have gotten so corporate He's maybe kind of fallen out a little love of your, you know, of 
how it used to be, how he, they would used to develop these guys. You know, he had that relationship with Taker and in the, in the legends, you know, Stone Cold Rock and all right, that. But, but those that's only were a couple a, guys. Those were A-list legends, yes. though. Yes. That he went out of his way to make sure he was accessible yes. to those guys. He made yeah. the comment one time. He was, uh, and it might have been on the Stone Cold podcast on the network, but he talks about, you know, getting calls two, three in the morning from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Doesn't matter what time of the day is. Yes. When Stone Cold Steve Austin calls, yeah. you pick up. Mm-hmm. That that that's just so. Yeah. You know, between an Austin, a Rock, a Taker, mm-hmm. Sean. Yeah. Triple H eventually was. You could throw in that group of guys that definitely yes. had his ear. Maybe Kane, yeah, to to yeah. a degree, you know, but that's that's about a half dozen right there. Yes. So yeah, but I'm just saying with the Triple H thing, he he is rarely he is invested basically in that whole NXT brand. So I mean, it always seems like he has the door open for whoever wants to talk to yeah. him at the time. Well, wishing Bailey a speedy recovery, and it's unfortunate that she will not be a part of this. If you had bought tickets to this last year <laughs> in 2020, your tickets are good for this year's. On top of those that are purchasing tickets for 2021, Rolling Loud Rap Festival. Now, this is going to be going okay. down the weekend of July 23rd through the 25th. And people are like, well, why are you guys talking about Rolling Loud, this yes. festival? Well, because SmackDown's going to be there for two matches, mm. for one night, one night only, o- opening night, the 23rd. They're going to be in Miami, Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, SmackDown, uh, they are hip-hop and wrestling colliding. Okay. Yeah, Rolling Loud, they're partnering. And this, uh, so how this SmackDown's going to go down now, it's not going to be a full, full, full-fledged show. It's going to be two matches. Okay. The other matches will be going on at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland. Oh, so we're on remote. So uh, the matches. So, so actually, we're doing two matches. Okay. So, so this is going to be kind of like a Panama City WCW I was type say, thing. say this is going to be live. This and is going to be live. The, They're going to do two matches at okay. Rolling Loud. All right. And then the rest of the card, the rest of the show is going to be in Cleveland. They, I have a quote here. Okay. This says, quote, Um, what Matt Zingler and Tariq Sharif and the entire Rolling Loud team have built is spectacular, said WWE Senior Vice President Scott uh, Zeglini. We couldn't think of a better partner to deliver such a unique WWE experience to fans during the July 23rd edition of Friday Night Smackdown on Fox. Quote, I grew up on Sweet Chin Music, mesmerized by the spectacle that Vince McMahon and co. have built at WWE. Rolling Loud co-founder Tariq Sharif added, The ideal of weaving our two storylines into one world, one must see event is electrifying. Now, the headliners this year at Rolling Loud. Now, just think about the product okay, so, of WWE. Okay, it's this so is what I'm wondering. I, I, I'm interested in this because I'm wondering if there's... On the, the card this year, we got we got Travis Scott. Okay. Who, at one point, WWE put the roadblock kibosh on. Travis Scott was trying to trademark the, the term Cactus Jack. That's right. Yes. So there was a little yep. back and forth yep. about that. Yep. That's a storyline in itself. Yep. Some of the other headliners, we got ASAP Rocky, Post Malone, Lil Baby, 21 Savage, The Baby, Rick Ross, Young Thug, Megan The Stallion, Lil okay. Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, Kodak Black, Sway Lee, Lil Durk, Polo G, Chief Keef, Wale, Gucci Mane, Jack Harlow. I could just keep going well, on and Wale, on and on. Wale is a big wrestling guy. I know that. Well, so, they, I mean, that's a lot of them are, you know. That's they the are. Thing. And so, so I, don't, I don't know. I have not seen any well, criticism about this whatsoever. But my thing is, for years, hip-hop artists, either through their songs or through their actions on social media, what have you, whatever the case may be, they've always expressed their love for professional wrestling. Yes, they have. They always have. Yes. So <laughs> it, it is a good thing to help, you know, get the younger demographic and get a little more interest in with them. They need all the juice so they can they get right now. They it. they need all the promotion and juice and publicity that they can get right now, now to expand the brand. Is this a way? <laughs> I know she's pregnant. 
Okay. But is this the way to get Cardi kind of involved in this? Well, that and was, she was supposed to be the the SummerSlam host. So correct. is she going to be making a little surprise to kick it off? To kick this thing off? Maybe this is how they introduce her to be the SummerSlam host. Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Now, now, now she's also pregnant too. Which See, I, that's I, the thing. I, I, don't, I don't know how know. that's gonna. Yeah. But she was already pregnant when they were already having these talks because I saw the photo. She looks to be. Oh, she, Okay. A little, okay. you know, I, I don't know exactly how far along she is now. I don't know if she's three or four or five. I, I, I'm okay. not, I, I, I don't right. know the details specifics yeah. on that. But, you know, you've got the Cardi B factor. You've got the fact that uh, Randy Orton does not mind talking shit to any rapper on <laughs> yes, Twitter, whether exactly. it be Soldier Boy, <laughs> whether it be, you know, we, we've seen photos of him and Migos in airports. Yes. We had Bow Wow wanting to well, yeah, do a full training. time. He wants yes. to trade. Or yeah. it, is it? Is it been confirmed that Bow Wow's been officially training at the PC? Well, does he have I don't a know the PC, but remember, he, he wants was to with do Rikishi. It. Remember yes, he was, he was with Rikishi. With right, so we've got that. We've got uh, Peter Rosenberg. He he does yep. a lot of work with WWE. Mm-hmm. He's at Hot 97 Hip Hop out of out of New York. Yep. He does radio there. So you've got that connection. You got Sasha Banks, who's yep. been doing rap albums. Yep. Her cousin Snoop, who they've done business with over the years. There's always been some pre-existing intertwining between yeah. WWE and the hip hop world, anyways. <laughs> and like I said before, the company needs all the kind of juice that yes. they can get at this point. I just don't know what's going on. We're now we've got well, these worlds coming together. We've got that going on. We got Vinnie Mac at Dave Chappelle shows. <laughs> Well, (laughs) remember who was, he probably still is, the number one merch seller so far this year, Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. So they probably looked at that and they're like, hey, we have got to do more and reach out to the hip-hop world, the hip-hop community. We have to, you know, have some more partnerships here and there and... This this for, must be part of for it. For years they've all they've always been intertwining but the they product didn't with really immerse no, no, no. themselves as they could have. But but you would still see appearances. You'd see them a sitting, but we they, we be basically like a week. Yeah. based the entire John Cena gimmick for well, the first half dozen years off of his love of hip hop. Yes. And, and now you fast forward yeah. to 2021. We got Bad Bunny doing mm-hmm. appearances with, with Booker T. Yes, you know they've done things with Three Six Mafia in the past with Mark Henry. They've yeah. we we so it it only my only thing I I'm more curious about what are the two matches gonna be <laughs> at. You got to have Randy Orton there. Randy Orton's got to hit Even somebody with an RKO. No, yeah, but that's the thing. Orton's you, gotta you gotta, gotta, yes. got to hit somebody with an RKO out of nowhere. You got to have Randy. We Orton. we got to kick that yes. off. Um, don't and it's no disrespect to these people. Yeah, but don't give me. I, I'm just throwing it out there, give General. Me a but, but, I, but I think match well, right. Shit. Yeah, our truth, yeah. you know, will probably be there. Oh, they will probably yeah. do something with the 24-7 oh, title. God, Maybe. Not. Yeah, they probably will. They, with everyone they probably will win it on stage. Everybody, everybody yeah. you, you, you will probably have Post Malone for about two minutes <laughs> yes. will be the 24-7 champ. Now, I want to see him do something. That Who, would be that? Post. Post I want to see Post get involved. That would be awesome. Uh, I, I just don't want a match of Shinsuke and Baron Corbin yeah, it's at Rolling Loud. For the king of rap. You've got to. They would do some shit like that. You, I, I want to see the Usos make an appearance and do a freestyle. Well, that's the thing. Do you put the big guns there? Do you I, put Rome in there. I think you, you got to do Usos. the big guns. Yeah, I think you do. I but think, then do you? That's the problem they're going to have though. Because then do you screw the audience that you've been selling and tickets to in Cleveland, and you don't have your main star? There? How about you throw it into a storyline where you have the Usos in Miami at Rolling Loud? Nobody's watching Roman's back in Cleveland. Okay, yep. Edge being the ultimate opportunist. Well, this would if well this would be after Money in the Bank though. This so is that's correct. the problem. But unless you introduce his next opponent, which okay. has Roman's which, at Miami. Okay, well, remember, someone cuts a freestyle. Who's the rumored opponent? John Cena. Cena. There gets we on go. stage. And does a freestyle okay. and throws his name in the hat at coming at Roman to go after to break the record. 
that would get a big pop. Yeah. I, that would, if, yeah, he shows up on stage at Rolling Loud and, yeah, and, and that, they're going back and forth. That actually. Let's would, kick it out there. That would be pretty damn good. Okay. I, 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 I yeah. I just look at, at this point, I, I am for anything. Yes. <laughs> To no, that's this company. Idea. Yeah, I don't give a damn what it is at this point. Yeah, I, I'm for anything. They need all the help they can get. And thank God the Thunderdome has come to rest in peace. Yeah, for the most part. I know for SmackDown, I think there's one more Raw in it, but uh, we're we're almost getting out of the contrived booze and everything else. So this will be good to see this live action. It will, especially now after these reports that it looks like WWE's television partners are looking to get more (laughs) involved in an attempt to boost the ratings for the WWE programming. Andrew Zarian of the Matt Men Pro Wrestling Podcast. He's reporting that Stephanie McMahon is set to meet with one of WWE's television partners later on this month with the purpose of the meeting being uh, for the network to pitch ideas. And right now it's not clear <laughs> if Stephanie McMahon will be meeting with the USA Network or Fox. Now, I, I, I've got to say, I, I'm all for the networks wanting to get their hands dirty and get involved and say, hey, what can we do to increase ratings? Because yes. after all, we did pay a substantial amount of money for yes. the package to broadcast. hmm the ratings between Raw and SmackDown, they're getting lower. Raw yes, drew their are. lowest ratings, and you could blame it on 4th of July or whatever, all, all you want, the 4th of July yeah. weekend, whatever. The ratings, they're just steadily declining. Yeah. SmackDown, you know, being that it's a better show and it's a shorter show, you would think SmackDowns would be at least more stable or at least more sending because mm-hmm. I do think that storyline-wise, they you, you can criticize SmackDown for certain things as well. Yes. But... The overall quality of that show, I don't even think right now that they're even close. I think SmackDown's just the better show. Yes, it is. So I'm all for the networks trying to get involved. But if the ideas of the network involves, I don't know, say like uh, USA from a couple of years ago, introducing the idea of the 24-7 championship... Oh, that's right. That's where it came from. Then I don't yep. want to hear their opinions. Yep, that's that's how it's this the blind all leading the blind at that yep. point. Yeah. Well, I know uh was it Fox or something that the report came out where they wanted the football nights or some themed nights. Right. And and you know, they tried to do that with Daytona a, a couple mm-hmm. months back where they were trying to uh you know stage the show around hey this is throwback weekend when they did the uh throwback smackdown it was thrown together or, no, that though. was because of the throwback rate the dirt race was it at Bristol? i mean it was to lump with the right. fox nascar it was coverage. thrown away yes it, it was thrown or yeah. not thrown away but it was thrown together yes and i didn't have an issue with it here's why you have a lot of nascar fans well yeah young and old that like pro wrestling too Yes. Here's the issue. <laughs> they love, they grew up watching the product when there was actual legends, actual star power. Yes. So the current product, I don't know how familiar your NASCAR fan base would be with the current product who's really over. I mean, I'm sure there's yeah. some here and there, but there's no Ric Flair. There's nope. no Undertaker. There's no Rock. There's no Austin. There's no Michaels. There's no Sting, Booker T, any of those. Yep. You yes. know. So that was that was my issue. I, I think that was a, a great idea to try to intertwine the audiences because yeah. but a I lot of them like. I think that was a network decision where they said, hey, you're doing this because we're promoting this NASCAR race as throwback and they only and we like, got to get our money's worth. they only got a couple days notice on that all of a sudden right. you're like oh it's a retro or throwback smackdown whatever the hell they called it we're going back in time okay so now you're already seeing fox is trying to say which didn't make sense be because this. smackdown is the younger show yes compared to raw and you know yeah. they did like a saturday night main event type throwback yes but for fox it didn't yeah, make any exactly. sense yeah well, I think Fox had one of those Saturday Night Main Events. What was it, 2005 or something like that? Or I mean, they had one of them that NBC didn't have, but I don't know if that's what they were trying to go with or not. No one even remembered it. But, yeah, you could see the networks. They are trying to help because, like you said, now I will say this. Their social media you know, engagement and whatnot because of this product, they're getting some return on that. 
But obviously they want the eyeballs on the screen and the ratings and things like that. So obviously, yeah, they're going to continue to pitch these ideas. So it is said that the uh, a major reason why the networks want to get involved to try and help increase some ratings is because of the fact that they're going to be hitting the road soon. We're going to be getting some television shows with live crowds and they want to add a little bit more value to the whole experience and everything else. Uh, in regards to the fans, earlier this month, WWE, they had announced that they are going to be hosting an episode of Friday Night SmackDown, which has now been announced as a super show oh, at okay. Madison Square Garden. All right. That's going to be in September, September 10th. And so it's going to be a super okay. show. It's going to be both Raw and SmackDown combined. So they're doing something, I guess, special because that is the backyard of the company. Uh, and I, I, I know. bet Fox, too, may have had a say in that and said, we want to show at MSG. Which, once again, makes the draft meaningless. We, yeah, and the draft is We're supposed doing to be the a draft couple a couple of weeks, weeks before. Say. Yeah. We're going to draft new rosters yeah. and already do a super show within the first month. Uh, but anyways, never mind. Yeah. You're not supposed to remember that part, okay. sir. The official Twitter account though of uh Madison Square Garden, the arena, they noted that all attendants over the age of 16 are going to be required to be fully vaccinated and must show proof in order to be able to enter the arena, the post also shared a link to a frequently asked questions page on their website. According to the site, fully vaccinated events require a person to have completed their final vaccine dose at least 14 days prior to the event. Now, WWE, they reportedly encouraged the majority of the the roster, most of the roster, to get the COVID-19 vaccination, yeah, but the, the requirement yeah. is not mandated by them. This is a Madison Square Garden thing. So, Well, it could be a state of New York thing or New York City. They have been very, very, very stringent on their policies and everything as uh, you know, everyone's trying to get back from this. So I know they have been probably one of the strictest states out there enforcing this and making sure you know you have the right card ready with you and showing uh you know what you got um you know this is not really anything to really mellow about or really no. like i mean it's yeah. just it is what it is and if you were yeah. planning on being at that show at madison square garden september 10th for the super show well just know ahead of time that's yeah. what you got to provide you got to provide yeah. uh proof and, and make and, sure and you like, don't wait till the last second because you're not going to yeah. get in because you need that dose 14 days prior to the yeah. event. And, and the roster too, like you said, though they've been they've been showing those PSAs now for months of you know get vaccinated, get the facts, all this stuff. So I mean they've been trying to do their part to help get people vaccinated and you know come out to this. So I guess it kind of ties yeah. in for what. You know, put your money where your mouth is, kind of thing with them. Yeah. The bad news of Bailey, that was news that came last, I don't want to say last second, but it did come later on during the day yeah. on Friday where pro wrestling fans found out about her injury. But before then, the big news in the company, talent wise, had been a few days prior where another DUI arrest for Jimmy Uso, who yeah. was on SmackDown. Yes, he was. You, you know, as far as the questions, whether or not the company was going to have Jimmy make the appearance, Jimmy was there, and so was Jay during the broadcast of, of SmackDown on Fox. But Uso was arrested for his now third DUI since 2019, dude. Ooh, not yeah. Good, not good. Latest arrest for driving under the influence that occurred Monday night in Pensacola, Florida. Uso, whose real name is Jonathan Fatu. He ended up posting a $500 bond Tuesday morning and was later released from custody. There was a copy of the police report by arresting officer William Roper, which was obtained by eWrestlingNews.com. Shout outs to them. The report details Uso running a red light, getting pulled over, um, speeding, which uh, he was going yeah. about 50 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone and showing multiple signs of intoxication from the alcohol. The According to the report, uh, there was also added that he was unable to keep his head still. 
had some difficulty maintaining balance and also had difficulty in performing the walk and turn. I don't know, dude. Third DUI since 2019. The first one, that was in Detroit. That was the one where uh, Naomi, his wife, in real life was with him. That was a messy one. And that led to a disorderly conduct and obstruction charge. And then the second one occurred five months later in Pensacola. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, I mean, the pattern's there. If he wasn't in this storyline right now, you know he would not have been on TV. Yeah. He is in the top storyline though right yeah. now. They need him, I guess, for storyline purposes, but who is and he just came back. That's he was thing. hurt. He, he was out for about a year. Back. He just came yeah. back in May. That- and they're they're saying there's some of the top level executives yeah. in the company that's pretty pissed at him right now. Well yeah, they have to be. Because he's in they the top storyline. To. You are you're in the biggest storyline that you know that you've had you know, maybe for yeah. them for a while. Well, maybe forever. You because, know, because of this, how they're trying to, and they even yeah. introduced it tonight, how they want to have the, them all hold the championships like we've predicted they would want them to do. Right. But he, he can't do it if, you know, he's got these demons. The company has always had this stance where they say, well, our workers, and they use that term independent contractors when yes, it benefits them, right? Yeah. And whenever there's a professional wrestler in their organization that's going through something personal, their main thing is, well, they're independent contractors. They're responsible for their own actions when they're not appearing for us. Yes. Yeah. And when it comes to things like substance abuse, DUIs, things like that, at that point, you, you got to throw, okay, yeah. legally... That might be your mm. your thing to say, your thing to have in print yes. or whatever. Yeah. But third one since 2019, yeah. you got to get him some help. Yeah. And we've seen it with guys before, you know, Jeff Hardy, you know, unfortunately, you know, he, they've sent him to rehab, I don't know how many times, even when he wasn't with the company, I yeah. think they tried to get him help. So, I mean, yeah, when they use that line, it's like, guys, you he, They've he, made storylines out of people's story, substance you know, Hardy abuse. Too, yeah, I mean they Hardy they and before then Hawk. Hawk, yep. Yeah. And and Hawk was a sad one when they did that. That was just bad when they make. Yeah, they make the real life thing. Well, Scott Hall, Scott Hall. I remember Bischoff on his podcast uh, was talking about how you know sick that that was making Scott when they were just throwing beer on him because he was on a medication. For alcoholism, and every right. time he would smell alcohol, he'd throw up. So they were throwing beer on him, and they had to do like retakes with him in Austin and all this shit for that mania match. Yeah. And it was, you know, painful to watch when they put these guys back in that scenario. So, you know, you do hear this good stories that they do help pay for rehabs and whatever, but like a oh, point they've here. Said plenty of talent over the years yes. to, to rehab multiple times. Yes. But now, you know, Maybe they need somebody they're traveling with them that will actually help out. Instead of saying, we have to send them away to rehab, maybe they've got to have somebody or, and I know, you know, they like, they like the independent contractor whole thing and all that. Well, we don't need to provide this. I think it's about time they've got to have somebody behind the scenes traveling with them or well, being with in them. Well, in Jimmy's case, I would to say, them. to push back a little bit, in Jimmy's case, he's got his twin brother. They're close. Yes, but sometimes you're not going to tell your brother things. Some, I mean. Do you really think so between those two? I I feel like those guys might keep it real with one another. They might, but. Roman know, might probably, not. he's the top guy in the company right now. Well, he's pissed for what pro- I understand. He's, he's probably. He's not look, happy. Look, I, I'm in a position where yeah. you, you're, we're related. Yes. We're in the same storyline yeah. together. We're top right now, top of the food chain. Yes. The fuck are you doing? Yeah, but I I just think for them, instead of sending guys away, I think they okay. just need some some personnel or something. I mean, you got the all Josh these Hamilton trainers. chaperone. Yes. Okay. Or, or not so much a chaperone, but someone there that can help them 
if they're having issues. Oh, you're saying that's what I'm like, saying. Like an actual, like a, a, a yes, sponsor, a like some or so, a counselor, or a substance abuse okay. counselor. So, somebody back. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Instead of sending them I, away. Okay, so because, I, I thought you meant like a paid babysitter, no, or something like no, that. No, someone no. that can relate. Yeah, someone who's been through it. You, yes. Because a lot of these counselors, they yeah, they are former users yes. or former abusers. Because the, that's the other thing too. These guys, they don't want to be off the road. They want to keep traveling. They want to keep making the shows because that's that's what they do. It's in their system. So, you know, you have something like this, the whole send them away. Well, that's not going to help them either because they, they they're going to say free whatever time. the hell they want to get the hell out of rehab to get back on the and road. And they've got too much free time on their hands. Yes, yeah, that too. Which is inviting yeah. those vices yeah. to come back into play. So, and I don't know that. Obviously, I don't know WWE's uh, makeup behind the scenes. They may have counselors or people available. I have no freaking clue. But I'm that would just be my you know response to that is it's about time if they don't have somebody behind the scenes there traveling with them or with them. I think they got to start doing that because we, we've seen just too many tragedies or. Too many stories, you know, of wrestlers and, and everything like that. It gives everyone a black eye, the whole damn business, because then people, oh, that's that drunk wrestler again. You know, the story was on TMZ. Right. So then the non-wrestling fan will see that and, you know, well, there they are again. They just, they're just they just wild guys that just don't know what to do, the hell that they're doing. So I think for the company, I think they got to start looking into more of that. Yeah, I, I'll, you know, just pulling for, for Jimmy Uso yeah. to – Get the help that he needs because at this point, like I said, three since 2019, you need yeah. help at, at that yes. point. Like, this is yeah, this that's is a, sign. a, a, a that's, bad thing. That's a this, reaching this out. Is, yeah. This is not. Um, when it comes to that storyline and one of the other main components of that, Paul Heyman, uh, he's been reportedly pulled from talking smack. I'm not sure if you saw this but well i was wondering because like i said my son has to watch all this programming they've done a good job of uh brain control on him and yeah all of a sudden last week I saw mcafee on there and i'm like hmm i like mcafee i like you know he was very into it and all that yeah but it's like where's Heyman? because you know Heyman was the one that really made that show entertaining yeah so i i didn't see the full story here though yeah, this is according to the Wrestling News Observer, the Wrestling Observer newsletter, I should say. They're reporting that this is uh, this is a permanent thing. This wasn't a one-off as far as McAfee filling in for him. Uh, Heyman, he's, he's been doing it with Caleb Braxton since November of 2020. No significant reason as of right now for why they decided to um, well, you know, I, switch it up. But I'm thinking there might be something. Because, you know... Is Heyman doing a little bit more uh, behind the scenes? Well, maybe, or just... Now, I don't know, I'm just spitballing. Here's my thing. You know, talking smack, or talking raw and all that, you're supposed to have your commentators on there. And Correct. Well, nothing against Corey Graves. I think he's great, too. But you have a talent like McAfee. You're now... You, you, you haven't had that for a long time. So now you can give Paul a break. He can go back to being the manager. Because that was another thing, too. They had to set up angles on Talking Smack instead of actually doing what it was, an interview show kind of thing or do that. So then you always had, you know, and Heyman did a good job with it, too, is talking, you know, when he did the Apollo Crews thing. He's like, yeah. well, I think you should be a champion. You, you are and the big E And the Big E. And the Big E thing. And he kept yeah. on talking like that. But then you always think in the back of the head, well, is this leading to an angle down the road or not? And a lot yeah. of times, not really. Yeah. Not at that specific time. But you always had to think of that with him on the show as yeah. the – you know, the tribal chief spokesman and all that stuff. So I think with McAfee, they found out he's a big hit on TV. He's got a hell of a social media presence, obviously. So he's going to continue to put he's that He's going to be able there, to have a conversation with the, with the guys up. just like Heyman did. Yeah, so I think that's probably why they made the yeah. change. They can get let Paul go more on the road here and, you know, you – you give people what they want, yeah. and that's more McAfee. I think for Talking Smack, too, I think Heyman was able to set the bar of what you're looking for out of that show, and I think it'll be mm-hmm. an easy and smooth transition to McAfee because they're very similar in terms of getting the talent to open up yes. and have the conversations. I thought the interactions that Heyman would have on Talking Smack, they were great. Yeah, um, Major influence on the show, and... From what 
anytime there was interaction between he and the talent, there was just this level of just this organic openness. Yes. Got the yeah. talent away from the scripted promos, allowed them to be themselves, kick off other storylines, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, yeah. and talking smack, I mean, it's been around for a while. I mean, because yeah. we, you know, we still talk about the Miz the with great. his promo. Yes. The, the, the fantastic. So, so yeah. this has been so Heyman was able to add something to it, and I'm pretty sure it should be a pretty smooth transition to McAfee doing it. Another one of Paul Heyman's guys, Brock Lesnar. There's an update in <laughs> regards of, of with with him. Uh, the, the company wasn't able to bring him back in time for SummerSlam, but the company still reportedly has big plans for Lesnar, according to Matt Men podcast host Andrew Zarian. That guy again. Shout outs to him. WWE wanted Brock for SummerSlam, but for whatever reason, the plan didn't work out. Uh, Zarian says here that he believes it was more uh, creative than anything. It just wasn't fitting. Financially, though, it is said that the company wants Brock to commit to live shows, and they are currently working it out in the negotiations, and that this is going to happen. Okay. Um, do you see Brock Lesnar doing live shows? I, I mean, MSG. I mean, what kind of live shows are we talking? Okay. The big, the big Metro. Ones. So Minneapolis, we know. I think that- one thing though he might be using to his leverage is the Goldberg and Edge contracts, where they are For appearance being based and they are somewhat low appearances per year. So. He may say, yeah, I'll do some live shows, but it's going to be, I'm not coming to, to Green Bay or I'm not coming to, you know, small town USA. I'm, we're going to be in the major markets. We're getting ready for the major pay-per-views. I think that's maybe, you know, how they're going to use Live it. shows, that's a very wide spectrum. Yes. Like, what does live shows really mean? Because we think I live shows, think- we think like... Okay, the Tuesday, the Wednesday, the weekend yeah. shows. When I think live shows as it pertains to Brock Lesnar, I think live TV. Yes, that's what shows. I, yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, he's not doing the WWE live tour of the house show. He ain't doing Peoria, ain't Illinois. Doing, no, that's something like he ain't making that Midwest loop unless it's Minneapolis. Right. That's the only one he's showing up here in the Midwest. He will not be in Topeka, Kansas. No, he will not. Sorry, folks in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> Uh, SummerSlam seemed due to have been in doubt for John Cena um, as there was talks about Cena might not be able to do it after all due to the filming schedule. He's going to be doing this this spy movie called Argyle. That's right. They just bounced that one. Yeah, yeah. Dave Meltzer is reporting in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter that Cena will still be facing Roman Reigns in the main event at SummerSlam next month. Uh, despite all the speculation on social media that he would probably not be able to any longer make the show due to his movie commitments, Meltzer says that while Cena will be, he will begin filming the Argyle movie in August in Europe, it's possible that he will oh. have wrapped up the filming before SummerSlam or even there's the possibility. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing Cena's got a lot of pull with this, with this project because there's talks that he may even be able to hold the production off until after SummerSlam. Okay. Well, yeah. So the ball's in his court either way. That would be nice if he has that control, especially if you're doing some filming. Well, I'm already, you already got me geeked up and excited to see him at Rolling Loud. I'm expecting to see Cena at Rolling Loud now. And that would make sense. Who knows? John Cena probably helped hook this damn thing up with WWE and Rolling Loud. Now, and to bring it back, that would make sense with his latest film that is going to be coming out August 5th, Suicide Squad. Yeah. So, I mean, that could help build up that along with the SummerSlam appearance. So he's going to do some more media coming up here, you know, to help promote that in August 5th. But, yeah, I guess he, hopefully he does have that poll where they can do the filming after SummerSlam. And I hope he doesn't get hurt because, obviously, we've heard about, you know, when The Rock came well, they back can't too aff- early and all that well, stuff. Well, yeah, they, they can't afford for John Cena to get hurt whatsoever doing this match. Now, yeah, there will probably be – he's got to – his body's got to get 
refamiliarized with taking the bumps on yeah. the mat, stuff like that. But you cannot have him get hurt. If he gets hurt, I think that definitely damages the prospects oh, of him yeah. doing future stuff yep. down the road because he's really yep. taking this movie thing seriously. He's seen what happened with The Rock. Well, with he's the getting injuries. the big roles now. Right after F nine, and he and can't it afford like it. He'll to, be back for in that series. This is what I mean, he's been wanting to do. Yeah. He's wanted to transition from WWE into I don't want to say necessarily Hollywood, but just entertainment in general. Yes. Yep. He he pushed off uh, marriage and kids. <laughs> yes, yes. With Bella. Yes. This is what he wanted to yep. do. He knew he was going to be traveling. He knew he was probably going to be on the worldwide touring schedule. Yep. Being home with a kid that that yeah. it doesn't allow you to do those mm-hmm. kind of things. So this is what he's had his sights on for the longest, and that's what he wants to continue to do. And anything that's a detriment to that, I think he is more than willing to subside and pushed it out of the way for him to continue to do this Hollywood thing. Yeah. So getting hurt because yeah. Vent, hey, pal, neat, you know, I, I think, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. even if he didn't come back, Vince has taken the John Cena name. So Vince gets a cut, too, for John's Oh, does he get a producer movie credit endeavors. kind of deal, too? Yes. Like, uh, like his Rocks movies? Yeah. So, you know, it's a win-win for Vince either way. But, yeah. yeah. Um, as far as AEW jumping into their news, um, they had a, you know, for the most part, they had a pretty good week. They yeah. announced it all out in Hoffman Estates. Yeah. They will say Chicago, but Hoffman Estates that that sold out yeah, night sold out, one yeah. of fighter fest sold out. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lot of their live shows selling very well. Yeah, and they're They've the got, first one to get back on the road. They're they a nice back on the road. They've week, got yeah. fans. It looked good. I, yeah. I know we, you know, watching Dynamite this past week, one of the first things I said to you was, damn, it looks good on television. Yeah. A crowd, a sea of a live crowd in front of a, a, a you know, yes. a t- television camera for pro wrestling. It looked yeah. great. Well, they didn't disappoint in terms of giving you some shock value this past <laughs> Wednesday during the Dynamite episode. We got an appearance, man, and there was this issue a couple of months ago about the networks wanting pre-promotion. No surprises. <laughs> we want to let you know six weeks in advance that Sting is going to be showing up. We want you to know that Christian Cage is showing up. We want you to know that whoever we bring in, we well, they said screw that this past Wednesday. They gave us definitely a surprise, and it's a yeah. surprise for multiple reasons. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. What did you want to say? Well, I'm this? just saying with those other two, you know, those were well-known household names. That's my guess why they were doing the whole, hey, you got Sting coming up? Give us just a little heads up. You got Christian Cage. Okay, another guy that's been around for some years, WWE. Especially a Sting, a guy who for years was on our network. Give us a little heads up. So this I could see where they're like, oh, okay, because no one mainstream would really know this unless you were – you know, a wrestling fan. A wrestling fan. So we're watching Dynamite, and we get about halfway into the show. We've already seen Cody and Arn Anderson yep. on this episode. Cody's Kick in a strat the, match. Yep. Kick Cody the kicked thing. off the show, yes. which I felt in hindsight, and we both said this, that if you were going to do what you did, the Cody QT strap match mm-hmm. should have been the main event. Yes, but we kicked been. it off in which Cody gets the grand entrance. QT's already in the ring, so you already know who's going to win this. Yeah. Anyways, that match is over, and later on we get a segment of Arn and Cody in the ring. Just about the start of the second hour, so they were. You know, There's a promo. There was, yeah. Going on. Yeah. Tony Schiavone in the ring with Arn. There's a promo going on. Lights out. Lights come back on. Who do we see? We see the former Aleister Black of WWE in the ring in a stare down with Arn Anderson. Hits him with the black mass. Cody yes. stands up. They're face to face. There's a uh, pretentious, there's this, this stare hand down. stare yeah. down and yep. a potential handshake. No, I'm going to hit Cody with the black mass too. Crowd pops. Yeah. This immediately sets up a feud between Black and and Rhodes. Rhodes, uh, he and Brandy just had the baby. So Mm -hmm. one would 
think that this is going to, without a doubt, be Black defeating Rhodes whenever they do have this match, which Maybe. I'm going to assume is all in. Maybe. Or all out. My, Remember, my apologies. Cody doesn't have the track record of putting these guys over. <laughs> well, I, I don't think he, he's got a choice. I don't think he's got a choice on this one. I don't think he's got one, a choice but, on this one. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. Al, the former Aleister Black, he's going to be going by Malachi Black in AEW. And AEW confirmed that he had signed a full-time deal with the promotion a couple of days ago. So that put to rest the speculation from pro wrestling fans that Black was only going to be doing a one-off feud with Cody. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, you'd be crazy as hell well, to just they, bring in they have done Aleister Black or Tommy End. Deals. Yeah. But you'd be nuts to just only bring Tommy End in for a five-match deal or a one-off. But um, this is more, it's about the timing more than anything. That was cool. Yeah. You, you didn't see it coming. Yeah. But it got people scratching their head, and for good reason. Black was just recently released by the WWE. Yes, he was. They all have this, what's supposed to be a 90-day non-compete clause. Yeah, we were trying to do the math. We were doing the math a couple episodes ago, and this put the recently released talent that were in the batch with Black, which also included... Was that Samoa Joe? Was that Braun Strowman? Yes, that or no, 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 no. He Joe was, was the night. Of, that was after, after Mania. Mania so but he Black was and, and last, Strowman, they were in that batch. This late May one. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So that put the non-compete around, eh, give or take, all out. Yeah, because we were talking about, well, the will, date was going to be about September absolutely. 2nd, and all out was like the 4th. But the Dynamite episode, just a couple of nights ago, the the second week of July. So people are scratching their heads like, yo, what's going on here? Yeah. Well, release the main roster superstars, like we said before, with WWE, they're all subjected to the 90-day non-compete clause after being released. But according to reports, <laughs> and PJ, you said you ain't buying this. I ain't buying it, no. But you there apparently me, was yeah. a clerical error on the part of WWE meaning that Black only had the 30-day non-compete clause that NXT talent are subject to, meaning that he was free to sign with AEW sooner than expected. And apparently, according to the reports, before they call up NXT talent to the main roster, they restructure the deals and they elevate the 30-day to a 90-day. Now, I will say... I'm just playing devil's yeah, advocate yes, to yes. you. I'm just going to chalk it up for now and play dumb and just say, I'm just going to say he was the lucky one and he was the, the, the lucky one in this situation. Now, the other side of me, mm-hmm. the almighty WWE, the best legal team in all the land when it comes to pro wrestling or any international entity. They dot their I's, they cross their T's on everything. Yes. They cover their ass on every loophole imaginable. You're telling me they really missed out on something kind of important like that? No. I'm I'm not buying this story. And you think it has a little something, something to do with the wife? I do. I, yeah, here's my thing. To make everyone happy in this. Selena Vega, by the way. Selena Vega just came back. In fact, we're putting her in the Money in the Bank match already. So she comes back to SmackDown. I think just to make things, you know, happy for them. Okay, we want Selena, obviously. Just let them go. Just, you know, she's happy. We've got her. That will make them happy if if he's work he can work freely where he wants to go and just do it like that. And we, we're th- already seeing that they are starting to admit, yeah, we made the mistake of signing these guys and not letting them, you know, maybe not letting them go where we wanted to because we we overestimated this thing a little bit. We thought we had to lock everyone up. Well, maybe that was not the case. The question with Vega. Because it was what just uh, what about eight weeks ago or so that she was spotted at the performance center with the Rock's daughter yes. Simone. Yep. We didn't know if she had officially been signed to an agreement. Correct, and I okay. don't think she and, was. And a that couple time. of weeks after she was spotted, not even a month, her husband gets unfortunately released by the company. June second was that date. So okay. So her husband gets released. 
at the time of him being released, is she officially signed to a talent deal with the company to come back by then? Because if not, Mm -hmm. I would just think that she would just leave with her husband then. Well, and the company doesn't have to worry about cutting a deal like that. But you say that where, she's, as of right now, she had to take the safer deal. Well, I think she had to. And, you know, quite frankly, I think they valued her more than him or at, at that level. Now, I would say Triple H. <laughs> Well, Triple H liked them both. I mean, they Absolutely. both came to the NXT. I mean, well, hell, obviously. he put Zelina with Andrade, and yeah. it took that whole yeah. character to a whole but new level. I think the value was more of Selena staying and making her happy. And you're constantly, you've been releasing all this female yes, talent. You have. You need people. You needed you need someone. You need a great talker like And her. she's great. Yes. She's believable. Yes. She's credible. Mm-hmm. She was one of the best things you had I mean, when now you with first the kicked injury, off the Thunderdome. Absolutely. You have a heel to kind of replace Bailey right there. Not saying she's going to replace you know, the talent of Bailey, but I'm just saying you have another piece there. But, I, yeah, I, I come down to this. I don't think it was a clerical error at all. I think it was something like the, the, her contract was coming up. She probably said something like, okay, I, you know, I'll sign. Is there anything we can do about this, or you know, work it out behind the scenes where he can do his thing and appear a little bit earlier than that? I, I, you know, they could be real hard asses and lock it down ironclad. But we saw with Andrade, you don't want to piss off Charlotte Flair. You want to keep her happy too. It was Andrade was released? He's on AEW, and he was on there sooner than he should have been yeah. as well. Yeah. So I think they're. Kind of saying, okay, let's let's make people happy here. We want our people happy, and if this is what is going to happen, then let's just do it. Yeah, it's not like they're going to lose. It's not a war, so I, I think yeah. they finally have come to that. They're like they're not overtaking us. Yeah, they can have some guys. We can maybe live together harm, harm, you know, in harmony. I don't know. but I want to yeah. be the mature and rational pro wrestling fan in this scenario. I don't want to deep dive and all look forward to the future of these. As pro wrestling fans like to always say, there, there's always that term, the dream matches. Yes. And we're already trying the dream and fantasy book who we could pair him with. I really just want to have a wait and see. We already know out of the gate mm-hmm. he's coming at Cody. Yeah. He should be getting a win at Cody. Yes. I don't want to see any fast elevation towards the world title. No. I yet. think honestly, Tommy Inn, Alistair Black, Malachi Black, whatever you want to call him, I think he's so good. He's got the type of dark gimmick that and and I said the same thing in WWE, he really didn't need a belt. He had an aura around him. Mm -hmm. that you thought would be a part of that next generation. I'm not trying to put him on the level of Undertaker, yeah, but on the level where he could be that next generation's talent that doesn't, you don't have to put the belt on, but he's Mm -hmm. a guy that other talent want to work with at the big events. Yeah, And I think they missed the ball with him on that. And I think if Tony Khan and company, if they were thinking smart Mm -hmm. about this and and logically and think having that mindset and they've got minds in that company that I hope they utilize for his, for his well being in guys like Jericho guys, like Jim Ross guys, like Arn Anderson who have been around the takers, the Jake Roberts over the guys Mm -hmm. like that. If they were, rational with this, they would book him that way. But the problem is they have a guy somewhat with that gimmick right now over as a baby face and Darby Allen. I think that might be a little bit of an issue. Maybe. I mean, you know, they could have the hell they could have pretty good back and forth as well. So they, I mean, that's the thing. He, he is the dark ominous guy, but he kind of gets screwed because you had the taker, and let's not forget, you had the Bray Wyatt deal going on, too, as the Fiend, another darker kind of character that he had to battle against, and that's probably why it was not working among all the other shit they were throwing at him on the main roster. So now you're going over here. Well, you got Darby Allen. He's doing a coffin match and all this stuff, so he's kind of 
got the dark persona. So you know, you know, I think it. He's got a better chance at AEW. The match is going to be great. I know he said he wants to work with Jericho. So that'll obviously be coming down the pipe. We know Jericho likes to work with these guys and and uh, you know get them involved with the programs as I well. I think I want to see but, Jericho in the inner circle broken up by the time I see a Jericho I so. b- black match. Yes, I hope so. I don't need to see Black involved in an angle with the inner circle. If it's going to be him and Jericho, Jericho yeah. should be a baby face by then. It kind of seems like the way they brought him in, that they want Black to be a heel, although he got a pop. And when he gave the see, Black match to have. both Arn and Cody, yes. he got cheered. And that's what we were talking I don't about think the in the beginning of this. Yeah, have go-home heat with Cody. Yeah. I don't think they hate Cody. I think pro wrestling fans right now just need a break from yeah. Cody. Yeah. I I think that's all it is, and and, I, and what comes along with that is you you just kind of you know it's a uh, you know Cody Cody's character has been just completely ostracized from yes that crew if you will of yeah. EVPs he's his own guy yeah and and I think um, it's becoming very transparent that just through the direction Mm -hmm. that they're not clicking on all cylinders. And I think that's kind of rubbed the fans the wrong way and just Mm -hmm. the whole forcing it down the throat between Cody and Brandy, just a lot of combination of that and the reality show and, you know, some of the comments that have been made. I think fans just want Cody, just go away for a while and then come back, and we can give you the pop again. And I think that's what screwed up the spot, though, was kicking Arn Anderson. They thought, you know, he would get heat for doing that. He would get booze from the crowd. He no. didn't. They no. cheered it even more. And then when he did it on Cody, when he when he could do it on Cody, I would expect there would be some pops. Yeah. But when Arn, I, obviously they did it to try to get heat on him. It did not work. So now you have this. Which that really issue, cracks me up because which, Arn Anderson hasn't been a heel in over 25 years. Exactly. Arn Everyone Anderson. Loves Arn. Everybody loves and respects Arn yes. Anderson. So I didn't understand, but I I, I get it. And I, I, I know so, Arn's talked about too. He can't take too many of these damn bumps with everything he's. Especially with when his I saw the black mass roundhouse kick yeah. to, to to the face. I'm thinking, is Arn going to get whiplash? Is is yeah. this is you know with the whole neck uh, thing? But yeah. um, in terms of the matches, Tony Khan. He was talking about one particular match. He made an appearance on the Dan Libertard show to discuss a number of different topics, but most notably, dude, how he plans on uh, putting on another exploding barbed wire death yeah, match following nice. the buy rate success of Revolution this past March. He said, quote, I was trying to be too safe, and I let the professionals handle the stuff, and they are guys who don't understand wrestling. <sighs> He said, a professional pyrotechnic guy. They totally shit the bed. I ended up not paying them. It was like a hundred grand. They ended up refunding all the expenses of the match. I ended up not paying for the exploding barbed wire death match, which I shouldn't have. They screwed up royally. We put together something great. Kenny and John, Kenny, Omega, and John yeah. Moxley for those, that, just in case you just watch, started watching <laughs> wrestling yesterday, those who I'm referring to. Work their asses off, and all they had to do was set up the final explosion. This is because we use professional pyrotechnic people who are supposed to know. He added on that, quote, next time we do this, and I will do it again because the match drew. (laughs) Everything John and Kenny did until that point was outstanding. It wasn't their fault it didn't go off. Long story short, it was a long time ago, and we've bounced back since then. That was three months ago. Not a long time ago. (laughs) And everything has been pretty perfect and couldn't have gone much better. I really, I was really grateful that the next pay-per-view was up and did a big number. Um, They're professional pyrotechnic guys. Should have been better. Now, look, I'm I'm not putting this blame on Tony Khan at all. I'm not putting this blame on John Moxley or Kenny Omega. Yeah. He paid, he paid for a service and they, and they failed him. They failed him. Here's my thing. You've already told me you're going to do another one of these matches. Where? Why not just (laughs) organically set it up and just allow me to be the fan and immerse myself into it instead of telling me outright 
you plan on doing one. Why not just have surprise me? Where's the element of surprise in pro wrestling now? Like you're telling me now. Yeah. I'm going to be watching the product every week Think, oh, gosh, is this the week that they're going to reintroduce this? Is this the week they're going to reintroduce this? There's no surprise element to it. I don't mind they're going to try it again, and there's no doubt in my mind that when they do it again, don't do it right this time. He'll hire the right pyrotechnic people. Okay, and I'm I'm calling bull on the pyro thing. I, I really am. We watch the YouTube show a couple times. We've watched... Wednesday night. They nail it out of the park because everybody, everybody, everybody gets pyro. Everybody gets pyro. Everybody gets pyro. We know the pyro works. I Now, yes, obviously it didn't work at the end of this match. But what happened five minutes later after that? You know, Moxley gets up in the ring, cuts the promo. Kenny Omega can't draw or can't make an exploding ring worth of shit. What was Khan running with in the press conference after that? Uh, to, uh You know, uh... Kenny Omega can't make an exploding ring. <laughs> That's the bullshit story he was running with the whole damn time. Now, he could have continued to run with that story. That could have been part of the storyline. But they did it. And now he pivots to this shit and says, well, yeah, you know, obviously it didn't work. I didn't pay that bill. But it drew a big number. I don't know what he thinks a big number is for pay-per-view buys. I, I don't know. I don't know the financials or whatever. I'm going to kind of doubt it's not what would be considered a big number. I, I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't think you're on the type of like uh, UFC numbers, uh, pay-per-view. If WWF was still doing a pay-per-view model, mm-hmm. I don't think you would have reached those numbers. I'll say you're above TNA, obviously. I don't know what he's basing number numbers off of for pay-per-view buys. Other problem is, okay, so you're going to do another one. Okay, this, though, was the perfect time to do it because you had no damn crowd in the buildings. You couldn't have a crowd in the buildings. So for this next one, there's no fire marshal in hell in the United States of America that's going to let that many people sit around the ringside with an exploding ring. It's just not. So I, I like you said, well, we're going to do it again. Okay, well, then you're going to do it in front of a damn empty arena. They're not going to let that many people sit ringside for an exploding ring match. You're going to have to lose some money on your in crowd. So that's great. You got. Or do it off site and, and show the crowd on a video board. Which, like oh, they'll done love that. Some, right? I mean, we haven't had issues with that at all either. So my, my problem with Tony Khan is just some of this stuff. I like what he's doing with, a, you know, trying to get this organization off the ground. You know, take the fight to the WWE because, yes, we need more options. I I love the spirit that he has. But sometimes doing, you know, the things he says and and just going back on things like that, it it just drives me up a wall like this comment here. It's like, why would you do another one? Like you said, too, now we're going to be waiting for it in storyline. Is this going to be a yearly thing where, you know, the pay-per-view is just going to blow the shit up? Part two? I mean, what... What are we going to expect? And, you know, for them drawing money, like I said, they're not going to be able to have much in crowd live spectators at this thing. So, yeah, it'll have to be another tape show at the Jags Stadium or something like that. You know, we get on WWE for how they've whored out and sanitized events that used to mean something. Money in the yeah. bank doesn't mean what That's, it used to. Yes. King of the Ring doesn't mean what it used to. Hell in a Cell, Elimination Chamber, doesn't mean what it used to. Mm-hmm. All of us wrestling fans have gotten on that company about what they've done with certain gimmick matches. Yes. This company is still young, AEW. Mm-hmm. I'm already over the Casino Battle Royale. Well, because the problem match. is it's every pay-per-view. Is a battle royal of battle some royal sort. of it some make sort it special? Yeah, you've already told me you've got another exploding barbed wire match that's coming up. Yeah, eventually, gotta start getting on you too yeah. for wearing out your own gimmick matches. Yeah, I don't mind you doing them mm-hmm. as a fan. I want you to do them, yeah. but give me that element of surprise and give it, make it mean something. Mm-hmm. 
I don't want to look at my calendar and say, oh, it's 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 yes. August again. It's that time for AEW to do the traditional, you know, yeah. it, it's, you know, so I, I think a match like that, I don't mind it, but don't tell me, make it random, build up a storyline that will build towards that match. I'm really having a hard time finding that peop- the numbers were that high. Yeah. To watch a couple well, guys I think get based on I, I think ring. based on their expectations. I don't know what their expectations I were. Either, but I, so so I can't to, to, to be repeat, fair, I can't try and yeah. compare their buy rate numbers to a UFC or WWE because just they just like haven't anything, been around for that long. The sequel usually sucks. So if the first one sucked, the sequel might suck even more. Well, whatever card that they decide to do another exploding barbed wire match on the next time for the next pay-per-view, hopefully it's not a long three and a half, four hour pay-per-view like that one was. Remember, that was the super... It that, will be, though. That was they, a long, long, they long... Gotta and hopefully have- it's a shortened show. Tommy End wasn't the only one making a debut on AEW Dynamite this past week. We had a gentleman who, uh, if we go by the social media accounts, uh, Fat Bastard. Made his debut. What? Yes, a fan that jumped the rail on the recent Road Rager. Oh, that. And I don't know if you've seen the video of this yet, but yeah, so the fan jumps the rail on Dynamite. This yeah. is during the MJF Chris Jericho uh, stare down the ring or the face off in the ring. And the guy claims to be a fan of Jim Cornette. <laughs> the fan in the video that's shown oh. online, it shows him being taken down. By not just security, but also ring announcer Justin Roberts. He gets, uh, I don't want to say that he got a clean punch in, but he got a little little rake to the face by Chris Jericho before being dragged out of the arena. Mm-hmm. The video shows him coming down the the actual ramp. Yeah. That was where he's he's met and security kind of it was kind of a little late like kind of getting well, there. Well, they probably thought he it was got a up to the ropes because yeah, they have a million who knows? <laughs> Right, you never know who's going to run in in AEW. Yes. So, yeah, security definitely probably didn't get that memo. Yeah. Yeah, so he gets dragged out of the arena. The video also shows the well, besides showing, you know, rushing the ring, um the person on Twitter, they spoke up and the individual, what I had said before, they are going by the name of Fat Bastard on Twitter. They tweeted, legendary Jim Cornette and his podcast co-host, Brian Last, asking them how they liked his AEW debut. He said that he did it, quote, for all of us real wrestling fans. And so that... Wrestling is no longer a safe space for friends to dance around and play dress up. Okay. So so he, you know, Cornette, if you listen to his podcast, very entertaining. Cornette's yeah. always been entertaining. Cornette has always had some rants against AEW from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Cornette also has rants against WWE. Yes, he does. Cornette also has rants against Impact Wrestling when they do dumb shit and they shoot and kill people at weddings. And early days, WCW. <laughs> he Jim gets Hurt. on everybody. Yes. So this isn't, to, to me, it's not just that Cornette just rants against AEW, but okay, fine. Cornette himself does not <laughs> condone this behavior. Yeah. And there are people who have been around Cornette for years that knew this off the bat. Now, this fat bastard account, he takes plenty of jabs at Jericho. I, I looked at the thread. Okay. I even looked at the bio. I, I think the beginning of his bio says that Chris Jericho punches like a bitch. That's how his bio <laughs> kicks off. So, so he's he playing off of that. the, yes. he updated it. <laughs> and looking at his thread, he clearly has some issues with, with just Jericho in general and AEW and this and that. Because well, I other. was wondering, I know Cornette is getting on Jericho now, but if he was trying to make but, a point, he'd run in during a Young Bucks or Omega match. Correct. Jericho responded to Fat Bastard's tweet and said, Cornette... Would never condone this shit. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be down your dumb ass for thinking that. Yeah. So Cornette ended up on Twitter responding himself. Cornette says, quote, got news for you, dipshit. The ring is sacred ground for us. And even if you and a lot of others think that you can kick the shit out of the young bucks, I would have turned you into a tennis racket popsicle, and you're lucky someone didn't gut you like a fish, and you're blocked, end quote. (laughs) 
Brian Last also chimed in and also responded to the individual, fat bastard, saying that, quote, real wrestling fans don't jump the rail. You should be embarrassed. You are blocked, end quote. So this was a scenario of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. This guy decided to do this, thought that he was going to get co-signed by Cornette, and instead uh, he took two L's. He yes. got a punch to the face from Jericho. He got taken down by Justin Roberts. He he got a lot of L's in this. Yeah. He got Who a promo cut on him by be down the yeah, road. He got, yeah. He got a promo cut on him by by uh Cornette and last, and yeah. he got blocked. So there you go. Yeah, Fat so, bastard R.I.P. So again, stay in your seats. Don't jump the rail. Um, I would have loved to have ended the podcast this week on that note, but unfortunately, uh, a little bit of a downer, man, because it, it has to do with one of the legends of the game. And this is sad stuff that you hate to see with professional wrestlers who, um, whether it be, you know, they die a premature death or mm-hmm. they prematurely get into health issues that, that worsen and stricken them at such young yes. age, like, you know, you look at a dynamite kid, yep. you know, young guy, but just mm-hmm. damn it, pretty much crippled. Um, you see this, it just comes to the territory with pro wrestling. But for a guy who even some of the current generation are inspired by Terry Funk to see this, that he's not been doing very well, man. It's really a tough pill to sw- mm-hmm. swallow. And I didn't realize that it was this bad until this week. Yeah, because Funk has been going through some issues here. Um, he he had tested positive for COVID mm-hmm. earlier in the year. Yeah, um, that was back in February, I believe. Dustin Rhodes he had asked you know fans to pray for Funk. Yeah, and was saying that Funk was in a lot of pain. Uh, PW Insider they had noted at the time the pain was coming from a hip issue and overall damage that Funk has put himself through over the years. When I you think know, entertaining the fans, and if you remember Beyond the Mat, I think you talked oh about, gosh, even back then, about think about that. Beyond the Mat. That was yeah. 1997, yeah. 98. Yeah, he talked about that. I mean, yeah. that At was back that then in the yes. late 90s. He was yes. going through and still going out, taking those bumps for Paul E and ECW, yeah. and still doing the the, the and shows. The and saw Charlie stuff in, Amarillo, in New York. Absolutely, Throwing so the dumpster off the stage. No one will ever question Terry Funk's no. toughness, but. Uh, uh, the reason why we bring this up is because earlier in the week on a recent episode of his podcast, Don Morocco had revealed that Terry Funk is currently right now suffering from dementia. Oh, yeah. yeah, Morocco said that Funk is currently living in an assisted living facility for those dealing with dementia. Mike Johnson at PW Insider, he confirmed Morocco's comments reporting that, quote, Terry has been dealing with issues for some time and they have gotten progressively worse over the last year in the wake of the passing of his wife, Vicky, that we also yes. saw in Beyond the Mat. She had passed away in March of 2019. There was a statement that was made on the official Twitter account of Terry Funk, which clearly he's got someone mm-hmm. doing these posts for him. Yeah. Uh, but they have posted the following statement that, quote, Yes, Mr. Funk is currently receiving residential care for his multiple health issues, which do affect his mind as well as the rest of his body. As you can imagine, some days are better than others. Yeah. He and his family appreciate all of your kind of words forever, end quote. Um, yeah, I really don't have much to add to this except yeah. for just, you know, I guess better days ahead for Terry Funk. But this yeah. is... This is, th- this is, even though it's a tough pill to swallow, just knowing the kind of career that Terry Funk had, mm-hmm. this is the body's way of officially saying, all right, Terry, enough. Yeah. You know, enough. And now we... Yeah. I, I knew something, too, it was up with it because WWE earlier in the week released like a press statement on their uh, social media. And usually you're like, oh, no. I mean, because we are we had the Dell Wilkes thing uh Last like week, last yeah. week, where Del Wilkes passed away, and all of a sudden I saw the Terry Funk thing. I'm like, no. Yeah. Now they did say, you know, he's dealing with dementia, and you know, thoughts and prayers to the family. So obviously, this is a very serious issue. Um, and again, a guy that toughest sob out there, you know, back in the day, just wrestling. Fantastic and promo and what he's done the, for the business. Yes, and probably one of the most well respected yes. professional wrestlers in history, just based on 
his longevity of being around so many generations mm-hmm. that got exposed to him. Yes. You know, Terry Funk, you know, with him and his brother and his yeah. father being a promoter, I mean, what, you say Funk's career goes all the way back to the 60s. Yeah. You got the stuff in the yeah. 70s, his stuff in the 80s, legendary, legendary. stuff with yeah. Flair. Uh, and continuing in the 90s, we talk about Beyond the Mad and how mm-hmm. he was dealing with his health issues then. I think yeah. he needed, what, hip replacement back then? Yeah, or the did. doctors were trying to tell him, yeah. and he just kept refusing. He wanted to make the shows. He didn't want to be out yeah. for a substantial amount of time watching Beyond the Mad. He's in that match, the main event at ECW, at their first yeah. pay-per-view, and there's his wife there and his daughter's there, yeah. you know, watching and mm-hmm. ooh and, and ah, and he, he's cut open. He's taking these dangerous vicious bumps in and yes. that again that was around 97 98 yeah. I, and, and, and he it, continued to work dates yeah. and, and it's a sad thing too because you know with dementia you know with the mind this guy has one of the best wrestling minds out there and unfortunately now you know not many people are going to be able to access it so i mean that's kind of the sad thing of this whole thing is this guy Share a lot of knowledge out there to folks, but this damn disease, you know, this thing, it's no. just it's just terrible that it's ravaging him like yeah. that. Prayers up for Terry Funk. We're the Bush League Mud Show once again, Slade. PJ. Thank you so much for listening to another edition. Please like and subscribe. Listen to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We'll talk to you next week.